Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our quarterly earning call for the third quarter of financial year 24. Your company has navigated through the dynamic market conditions successfully during this quarter. Our year-on-year -year growth continued as the overall market growth across segments, and the benefits or other acquisitions reflects in our performance. Recent updates and consolidation of M&D activities. Synergies from all our recent acquisitions continue to reflect in our operations, as production and shipments grew year on year, on the back of contribution from acquired assets. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, we undertook a steady cut in production, mainly due to deliberate tightening of our customer credit risk criteria. This led to a sequential dip in top line this quarter. Despite this, production in our gym share to plant grew, mainly driven by functional products. This plant's proximity to key steel plants should help benefit logistics of for us. On blended EBITDA, Margins were adversely impacted due to investment in increasing skill workforce and higher year-to-date bonus provisions, which together offset the benefit from lower material costs. We continue to take initiatives to improve our operational efficiencies. As part of this, we recently announced plans to close down our dry plant, which is under RHI Magnet Sita India Refractory Limited. This plant comprises hardly of 0.07% of our consolidated value. Its net worth is barely 0.04% of our consolidated revenue. This plant is much smaller than the other plants under RHIM IRL and produce only one product which can be made at a larger scale at our Rajgarhpur unit more effectively. Therefore, this move will help bring cost efficiencies, economies of scales, and overall consolidation. Moreover, we also announced plans to amalgate RHIM 7 refractory limited into RHIM IRL. This move is aimed to consolidate the refractory business acquired from Dalia Bharat Group at one place and effectively manage them under one entity. We expect this to enhance value, expand net worth, provide a competitive edge, reduce cost, and streamline the corporate structure. About production and capacity utilization, during this quarter, we strategically reduce our overall production to 78,000 tons from 90,000 tons in Q2-24. It is mainly attributed to inventory reduction by 14,000 tons, of which strike at Rajganpur for almost nine days impacted of 2,300 tons. Our overall capacity utilization shifted from 67% in quarter 2 to 58% in quarter 3 of Q24. RHIM, RHIM IR, and JSP Jamshedpur had utilization rates of 70%, 52%, and 50%, 58% respectively this quarter compared to 88%, 59%, and 48% in Q2. Going into the last quarter, we are optimistic based on our ability to cater to the market demand while optimizing the cost. About the macro view of strategy, as mentioned in the past, one of our key focus area is increasing our share in industrial and iron making and value-added products through product diversification and bringing synergies from our acquisitions. 
we are actively making initiative to consolidate all our operations and improve internal efficiencies rki magnesita aims to leverage its expertise capacities and market position to capitalize on market opportunities we are strategically combining our inorganic initiative to complement organic growth strategies to cater to the rising demand benefits of the recent acquisitions are reflecting in the form of higher production and shipments as well as more diverse product portfolio these moves position the company to cater to a wider range of end applications now i would like to hand it over to ms vijaya gupta our cfo to take us through the financial performance highlights yes vijaya yeah good afternoon everyone thank you sir uh, in the third quarter of this fiscal when we compare on yoy basis our consolidated results reflect a 43% revenue growth driven by substantial 58% increase in shipments this is primarily reflects the benefits from our recently acquired assets however our ebitda margin experienced a 2.2% decrease to 12.8% mainly due to 4.6% rise in employee related expenses and 3.1% increase in other expenses attributed to increase in shared services setup costs legal and professional fees and travel on a positive note there was a 6.1% decrease in material costs which partially offset these impacts now comparing on a quarter to quarter basis with the previous quarter uh, our revenue declined 6% as mentioned earlier this was because we strategically shipped 5% less due to deliberate tightening of customer credit risk criteria and average realization also was 1% lower due to lower input costs our ebitda margin decreased to 12.8% due to uh, lower uh, revenue this was due to investment also in our workforce uh, led to higher employee costs influenced by ytd bonus provisions and lower absorption of fixed costs moreover we are continuously making initiatives to improve operational efficiencies in with respect to debt we were able to maintain our debt levels at rupees 461 crore as of december 23 which comprises mainly of external commercial borrowing for 33 million euros and rest is all working capital debt we had optimally utilized cash our commitment to sound financial management is evident in the optimal utilization of our cash reserves towards working capital and capital expenditures as of december 23 our cash position stood at 43.1 crore the strategic approach ensures that our financial resources are efficiently deployed fostering stability and positioning us for a sustainable growth we have been able to maintain our cash conversion cycle at 95 days one day improvement versus 96 days in the previous quarter this improvement is attributed to reduction in inventory cycle and shorter payable cycle collectively impacting the overall working capital cycle that is all from our side we can now open the floor for questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may press 1 and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press 1 and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles So all questions please press star and 1 The first question is from the line of Jonas Butta from Birla Mutual please go ahead Thank you uh, 
for the opportunity uh, a couple of questions uh, firstly if you know uh, you can quantify the sort of uh, impact across multiple uh, pnl line items firstly you know on the volume front and the corresponding impact of that on revenue so what we see is there is a negative delta of roughly 52 crores on the volume front in the bridge that you've given uh, on on page 5 of the presentation is that the entire impact of uh, the curtailment of volumes to uh, to one of the clients or there is more firstly secondly you know if you can quantify the impact of uh, one offs if any in the employee cost which seems to have jumped and on the interest cost again because of the forex fluctuation so these three uh, sort of if you if you can just call those out in terms of numbers that's my first question okay yeah uh, thanks for the question as far as volume is concerned this was uh, mainly uh, shipments were impacted due to implement of credit block our global processes and this was uh, mainly to two to three main customers but they all are highly profitable and cash rich customers so there is nothing to worry about their credit worthiness and uh, and uh, we are not seeing the impact in the current quarter that is what i want to say but this was required to bring in uh, discipline and improve our working capital and our cash flows that is one uh, which led to this uh, dropping shipment then on employee cost actually it has gone so up ma'am the, the the quantification is what 52 crores had yeah. had the sales happened we would have been closer to yeah. 975 odd crores that that's right so volumes would still still would have been flat uh, sequentially then there would be no growth in volumes had this uh, credit block not happened is that understanding yeah, correct yes yeah that's right oh. okay yeah sorry and, and as regards employee cost uh, 1% of revenue is because of higher ytd provisions we had made because uh, 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 we had met the global bonus uh, criteria so uh, that led us to provisioning for the full year in this quarter so this 1% impact will not be there in the next quarter and higher interest cost is uh, because of uh, revaluation of uh, the debt the external commercial borrowing which we had 33 million because the closing rate of euro to rupee rupee had depreciated to 92 for <coughs> high rate there was a 22% depreciation but now rupee has come back to normal 90 levels so we will see this benefit in the next quarter how much was the impact ma'am uh, 16 crores as in would it be around 8 9 crores of delta uh, yeah the delta it is about 8 and a half crores of interest yeah. cost in q2 yeah that's right got it ma'am my second question or uh, sorry pramod sir my second question was on uh, docl if we, if we this uh, track the 9 months performance in terms of sales uh, uh, we have done about 750 760 odd crores worth of uh, revenue and we are we are in line to do roughly 1000 crores of revenue this year uh, you know this is more or less sort of flatish in that sense on a yoy basis despite having uh, some improvement in capacity utilization at least in the first two quarters of the year uh, you know what explains this sort of flatish top line you know is there a higher than expected price impact in this uh, in 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 docl and you know how how should one think of fy25 uh, volumes and revenue in just that subsidiary so again there is a combination of the two three factors one is uh, we have uh, about 9 days strike in rajgarhpur and uh, it was uh, you know unreasonable so we stood firm that we are not but and uh, you have to come inside unconditionally 
So it dragged up to nine days and then they agreed to whatever we said. So that was a good sign. Uh, but we lost some production and there's uh, uh, subsequently some uh, revenue as well. <clears throat> Apart from this, uh, not only this quarter, but last quarter also from DOCL, uh, it two, three plants where the payments were not coming as per commitment of the customer. So we squeezed the supplies uh, to, to have a you know, right balance of working capital. This has impacted a lot. And uh, third one is uh, that is, uh, you know, the business of uh, DOCL and RHIM in sale plants, we were having two orders. And now, with the combined entity, we are remain one company. So, in sales plants, you know, it's a policy of Steel Authority of India to have two or three vendors for every order. So, earlier, they put together an L1 in RHA Magnesica and uh, DOCL is L2. So, we run away with 40% RHIM and 30% or 25% L2. But now with the single entity, I can get maximum 40%. So there is a business loss in Steel Authority of India also, which we are now mitigating to add products which we were not supplied to Steel Authority of India uh, during this year. And I think in 25, 525, we should be able to recover that losses. Got it. And quickly, the last one, sir, uh, you know, if you can remind us the capacity, uh, installed capacity at uh, RHIM standalone, uh, high tech, and DOCL individually. And if you can repeat the capacity utilizations at these three uh, entity levels. And that's my uh, last question. Thank you. RHIM is 180,000, 179, 180,000. And uh, Dalmia is about uh, 300. And uh, uh, high tech is about 36, 37 thousand. It was 62 thousand predicted earlier, but we stopped some products in uh, Jamshedpur uh, just to see the uh, economy of scale of economies. Uh, but uh, put together everything, the capacity is about 537 thousand or so. And, and the capacity utilization, at, if you can repeat, at these three entity levels separately. Yeah, yeah, I, I said earlier also, the capacity utilization in RHIM plant is about 70% last quarter, and uh, DOCL 52%, the share for 58%. Uh, earlier it was 88, 59, and 48. So uh, the share for capacity utilization has gone up by 10%, whereas uh, in uh, DOCL, about 7% less, and uh, also in uh, RHIM plants. So it, it, it was, you know, a deliberate decision to reduce our inventories. But do you believe this was the uh, last bit of it, as in, or there is some more inventory destocking or, you know, management still left in, in the system that will come in Q4 or Q1 of next year? I, I don't think uh, this last quarter we will not have that issue. Probably January, yes. We still are in the process of controlling. And per March, uh, we will be back to normal process. But I, I can only say one thing. Uh, we still have a pressure of, you know, overdue payments from some customers. And we will be quite strict with our supplies, and it will be linked with payments, irrespective of top line. Understood. Uh, thank you. I have more questions. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, ma'am. So, uh, I had a few questions. First one, I think, uh, was on the uh, top line. So you mentioned the fact that one alarming thing, actually, that because of the merger, now we are one company, we will not have two entities to bid for projects. Does that actually mean going forward, we will not be able to gain market share because whatever 
say the steel production grows at six seven percent, we'll be able to grow only at that rate, or we'll not be able to outperform the growth rate of the steel market because of this reason. Is that a concern? No, Rajeshji, I said only steel property of India. Sale is having tender system. Only Earlier, okay. there were three one companies participating: High Tech, Dalmia, and RHA Jagdishita. And now we are com uh, combined entity. And at the same time, if we become annual every year, we will get maximum 60% shares, right? And if three three companies are annual, we do L3 way, we were 100%. So this part, sale part, still not a video part. Yes, we have an impact, and it was mean. So that's what I said. We are trying to mitigate the products which we were not selling in steel property of India, or only one party was selling. For example, I gave you an example of, uh, say, uh, Jamshedpur plant or high tech plant. He was the only supplier for uh, ladle opening compound. So now we are going to allow to increase share of that product. So there are similar three, four more products where only one party was there. It will not have impact. We will be increasing the share. But where three parties were bidding for one product, there will be impact. So we are trying to mitigate. But overall revenue out of, say, uh, 3,800 crore for this year, there will be maybe... 12, 13% total revenue and sale plant. So out of this 12, 13%, there will be some impact, not overall impact. Okay, okay, thanks. And so uh, I wanted to also ask that uh, for Tata Steel, there is uh, Kaliganagar expansion and uh, uh, NINL expansion going on. Are we in a position to, uh, you know, increase our market share there or get... Uh, are we getting a significant part of this expansion project uh, other than JSW expansion, which I am aware of? Yes, you are right. Okay, so we can get some traction from that, is what you see. Absolutely. Okay, so and uh, on this 5% less shipments, I couldn't get the Vijay ma'am correctly. Is, is that number going to reverse this quarter or what? Uh, uh, on, uh, because we're already in the middle of this quarter. That 5% lower shipment which happened because of credit conditions, is it going to reverse this quarter or is it going to be not there at all? It is totally linked with the payment behavior of these customers. If the payments will come, there will not be a revenue loss, we will definitely ship out everything. And so uh, this y YTD bonus provision, uh, in which quarter was it there last year? At a similar time, was it there in the same quarter? Was it there in the fourth quarter? This uh, bonus provision, and was it of a similar magnitude or much lesser? You know, uh, it, it, uh, it, it varies uh, year on year basis. There are global KPIs which is applicable for our region, for India as well. So, if we achieve those KPIs, we achieve 100% of the provisions. So we, in the beginning, we are considering that we are going to achieve 100% of the bonus, whatever is the bonus percentage, right? So if we underachieve, we have a surplus money. The provision is more, we are going to pay out to that life less because we have not performed well or we have not achieved all the KPIs. If we overachieve, so then there is a bonus more than 100%. So this year, we are going to get more than 100% bonus for the employee. That's why this impact. Otherwise, we have distributed in 12 months based on 100%. Right, Vijay? That's right. So what is the steady state annual employee cost, ma'am? If I could, uh, as I had a figure, like it was uh, XOB crore before the merger, 204 crore ta as of FI23. What is the annual steady state employee cost one should assume? So it is around, uh, say, 9% uh, of revenues. 9% uh, of revenues is 350 crores, approximately. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So employee cost will be annualized about 350 crores now. Is that a right figure? That's right. Thank you. We move to the next question.
The next question is from Rashmi Narayan from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, I have a question. First, if I look at the top five integrated steel producers in India, uh, what's the kind of sales you get from them, which include JSW, Indian Steel, um, Arcelor, Mittal, and Tata Steel? Uh, can you repeat your question? It's not so my question is, number one, what percentage of your sales comes from the top five uh, steel companies in India? Okay, okay. Yeah, from the top uh, major customers, it's 65 to 70% of yeah. the sales. Five or six major yeah. customers. Got it, got it. And, and, and in that, uh, if you just uh, demarcate between uh, flow control and uh, non-flow control, which is one is either sold per ton basis, one is not sold by, you know, by, by heat basis, right? So what does that mix to these so top? 25% roughly, it is in line with previous quarters, 25% of revenue came from flow control and uh, on a consolidated basis. No, I'm just talking from, from with these top five players, which is which account for 65-70% of the revenue. What is the mix of yeah. flow control and non-flow control? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 25% is flow control, rest is non-flow control. Sorry, sorry. Because I thought that you you mentioned for the entire company, but I was just asking for the for that sliver of the top line. Okay. The more or less the proportionality is the same. Same. For a bigger customer, five big customer and the overall also. That is approximately 25-26% flow control. Got it, got it. And... and um, uh, you, you know, you you mentioned that uh, there has been um, uh, some uh, some issues in terms of labor. Can you just uh, elaborate which plant was it and uh, uh, which customers we couldn't serve because of that? Like which was the nearest one? This was a arrest while DOCL plant at Rajgarhpur, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, customer impacted. Uh, I think uh, out of these five customers, what we are talking about, uh, maybe three customers were from that, bigger customers. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, and uh, so the next question is that, uh, uh, what has been the uh, exports for us on a consolidated basis? Uh, what is it now and what is the plan for the next uh, 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 three, three years or so? As of now, it is about 9, 9.5% of consolidated basis, and the standalone is around 11, 11.5%. <clears throat> we, we earlier said that we want to increase our uh, uh, export, but unfortunately, because of uh, this uh, geographical uh, political situation outside India, we are not able to push as hard as we could like to. You know, Ukraine, and Russia war, and all these sanctions and all. So the, the, the impact is uh, heavy. So we are almost at the same level which we were at last quarter. Yeah. And, and, and for the products which you are making for export market, um, is, is what I mean, what proportion of that is for the RFI network is solely manufactured in India that you are the sole or perhaps the dominant uh, uh, export hub? As of now, I would say no, we are not export hub. We are supplying to many customers, 100% also, but uh, still, uh, you know, we have uh, various locations, various plants of flow control. So they are contributing throughout the globe. So uh, I would not say we are still uh, export hub. We want to be, but it will take time. But in our uh, region, uh, larger region like uh, West Asia, we have FLS contracts, full line contracts, management contracts, where all these flow control products are going from India. Sorry. So, uh, but the industry has consolidated uh, on on the on your customer side when the top five are actually leading the uh, steel production or steel capacity expansion in India. On the other side, there is also consolidation of. Uh, of players uh, in terms of RHI and the other uh, two or three competitors. Now, how this equilibrium has changed in terms of pricing for the industry from a refractory point of view, whether you are, uh, it's, things have become more competitive or it has become more rational uh, when compared to what it was like three years earlier? 
Uh, I would say uh, since uh, India is the only growth market, so everybody wants to come to India or increase their production capacity in India. And uh, I would not uh, hesitate to say that uh, if the way people are expanding, if everybody keep on expanding, we will have our capacity very soon. And then it will put a lot of pressure on everybody's margins. So we, we as industry should be very cautious when we are adding capacity. Yeah, I mean, because what, what I see is that for you, the margin is going down. Um, either it is because of internal reasons like employee cost, or is it also because of the fact that uh, um, the other competitor is also putting the price down? Is it I'm trying to understand whether the competition is, is, a, is a good competition or a bad competition to have now? Uh, I, I would not say the competition is good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes. Everybody is under pressure to uh, deliver, uh, but I, I don't agree with you that uh, our margins are going down continuously. It is uh, abrasion only this quarter. Uh, what we state earlier, we still believe we can deliver 14-15 percent on consolidated basis. 14-15 percent, EBITDA. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. The next question is from Riddhi Panchal from Chanakya Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so my, I have only two questions. Um, so how team company selects uh, refactory players and what are RHI competitors trends for them over the other? And the second question is, what is the CAPEX per ton of RHI? What is second question? CAPEX per ton for RHI. CAPEX cost? Yes, yes, CAPEX per ton. CAPEX. Okay, so what we have incurred CAPEX so far, so our CAPEX uh, this year so far we have done 50 crores. And uh, of which, uh, you know, this quarter is 20 crores. And uh, about okay. criteria of selecting, mm -hmm. you know, whenever a new steel plant comes up, they, they, uh, we are at advantage if uh, steel expansion goes on because for all converters, for uh, electric car furnace, for uh, RHD gasser, for ladders, uh, they, they prefer us or anybody else. So they will commission the plant with RHA Magnesita products. When it comes to flow control, it is, uh, you know, divided between us and Vesuvius and sometimes uh, a little bit of uh, IFCL. Uh, but uh, when it comes to lining, converter, furnaces, ladders, and RHD gases, we are the preferred supplier. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Chetan Doshi, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the employee cost on standalone basis has gone up from 39 crores to 64 crores. Now, that is almost 50% of the earlier quarter pro, uh, what we were paying. Uh, uh, that bonus of 1% uh, will not increase this much. And second question is, raw material, how much raw material we are buying from our principals? I hope it is at arm's length, but uh, what what is the amount uh, what we spend from our principals? And uh, these traded goods, are these traded goods also bought from our principals? You know, uh I will touch base this raw material part. So we are not buying any raw material from our parent company, though we have backward integration, but it is again a matter of, you know, economies. If we buy from, say, for example, China, X product at 100 rupees, and if we bring it from Europe or from Brazil, it is under 5 rupees. So I prefer to buy from market if it is cheaper than our own company. So we are not buying 
any product, uh, raw material from our parent company as of now. But if given a situation, if something goes wrong uh, with the, the geography, uh, China, etc., we have a backward integration. We can bring material. And we are the only company who can bring material from Europe, America, and keep on catering to our customers. Uh, when we talk about trading products, uh, yes, there are some products which is coming from parent company, which we are not producing as of now in India. We are trying to shift many products from Europe or America or from China to India, but still there are many products which are coming from parent company to India. Okay. Uh, regarding this, uh, coming to the employee benefit. Yeah, yeah. Is, I'll take this question. Yeah, please, uh, please. See, coming to employee cost, it is, you said it's gone up from 40 crore on standalone basis to 65 crores. Uh, this is because uh, uh, high tech has got merged in standalone, and the number of employees we have around 500 people from high tech. So the number of employees is one and a half times that from the previous year. That is one reason why uh, the employee cost has gone up, plus uh, the bonus provision which I have said. So this two together has led to increase. How much uh, bonus provision is there on specific? Because next quarter you said it will not come in uh, the balance sheet. So what is the five. amount? It's around five crores. Five crores. Okay. On stand yeah. Uh, and, uh, and one last suggestion. See, in the presentation, there yeah. is no mention as to what benefits we have derived after taking over high-tech and Dalmia. See, basically... Uh, when we see the margins going down on quarter on quarter basis, whether it was a wise decision to take over these two companies or not, because see, going through the presentation, we don't come across anything as to what benefit we have derived. And uh, when you intend to improve the bottom line, uh, if the same thing prevails. You know, um, we have mentioned um, uh, on slide number eight, strategic progress, uh, though it is not clearly mentioned uh, in numbers of how many crores we save here and there, but we have outlined uh, what we are doing. Maybe next time we will come up with some more granular uh, information. Yeah, yeah, because see that as a lay person, how, as a shareholder, how do we know what benefits we are deriving after these two big takeovers which has taken place. We understand that some time is required to, you know, when anything is merged into the main principal company and to get 100% out output from the new uh, entity, it takes time, definitely. But when, we, see, we are interested in ultimately, say, from second quarter, third quarter, we need to know when this fruits will be, you know, uh, on the balance sheet. Perfect, sir. We, we will come up with this uh, information in coming days. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vipul Shah from RW Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, welcome. Uh, hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so a couple of questions, uh, you know, to uh, Ms. Gupta. Uh, this uh, ECBs, which you know, we are we, uh, which are there on our books. Uh, mm -hmm. The understanding was that uh, you know they are on a fully hedged basis. So uh, you know this quarter on quarter fluctuations because of uh, the uh, India uh, standards. This should even out over the the duration of the ECBs. Am I correct, or are these ECBs open? I am absolutely correct. Uh... Uh, your assumption is correct. It is fully hedged. Thing is, the uh, the hedge rate which we had taken, there was a one rupee gap between the hedge rate and the uh, SAP closing rate, which we get from the group, the the closing rate. So, uh, so the rupee had depreciated 22 percent in this. Oh, so that's fine as long as it's. 
the 7 crore, 7.6 crore, what is here in uh, December quarter, we'll get the benefit in the next quarter. That is, if, you know, irrespective of the rate, I'm saying the benefit will come over yeah. the duration of the, uh, the, the ECB. Am I right? That's right. Uh, second, uh, you know, uh, question was on this, uh, on the last call also, uh, I had made a suggestion, you know, on this capital structuring, yes. Uh, yes. where, uh, you know, uh, you know, one could uh, look at a scheme of arrangement to offset uh, the uh, the goodwill on the books with the reserves, with share premium, etc., which we have. Uh, yes. I, I think uh, last time you mentioned, uh, you know, the management will consider that. Uh, to make, uh, you know, our uh, ROCs much more efficient. Uh, just wanted uh, to understand, is there any update on this or is there any thought process which has gone through? Yeah, we take your suggestions very seriously, sir. So we had taken a legal opinion also because uh, what we, the legal opinion said that uh, reduction in securities premium by adjustment of goodwill will lead to reduction in capital. And uh, this is not allowed uh, for a solvent organization. So we cannot go ahead with that proposal. So basically, uh, you know, the uh, the balance sheet uh, will actually remain a little elevated, uh, you, know, you know, till the time we, we find a way out of this. That That's right. Because we cannot reduce our capital. Fair enough. Uh, one more question, uh, you know, which I had, uh, you know, for uh, Mr. Sagar was that, sir, you mentioned that uh, in the initial remarks that, uh, you know, the credit tightening uh, measures which were undertaken on the customer side, uh, that led to reduction of volume. We also mentioned that uh, essentially these are uh, credit-worthy customers and there is uh, no, no issue as far as this, uh, uh, you know, receipt of any pending dues is concerned. So my question is, sir, you know, this volume loss which has happened and you alluded that they, they, it may not be reversed, you know, if the, if the credit cycle doesn't, uh, uh, if the customers don't come in as per your credit cycle. So has it led to gains for uh, our competitors? Has the volume shifted there or, uh, or how does it work, sir? So I don't think the, credit, uh, the volume has shifted because so fast they cannot do it. Uh, the products which we were supplying to them, we have annual uh, orders. So they have depleted their inventory in a way, I would say. If they were running at three-month inventory, now maybe they are running at one-month inventory or one and a half-month inventory. So uh, at the same time, we don't want to stop any customer, their production. But, uh, you know, it is a two-way traffic. If customer is expecting us to deliver quality product, on-time delivery, we also expect that the money should come. Otherwise, this uh, top line, bottom line is just a number. If you, I show 15% of it and everything is, you know, in my inventory and overdue payments, then economic profit is zero. No, no, fully, fully agree, sir. Fully understand, you know, ultimately the cash generation has to be there. So yes. the, the takeaway, sir, is that uh, since uh, you alluded that the customers are sort of, uh, you know, using up their inventory, as and when, you know, they return to our uh, credit cycle and their uh, old levels of inventory, there could be a bump up in the coming quarters. Yes, it is possible. It is possible if they pay us that suddenly, we will supply All right. All right. All right. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh from Marcellus. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, so for the quarter, I understand that uh, the top line was impacted because we tightening our credit norms. However, even if you remove that, the quarter on quarter sales growth uh, or volume growth is sort of flat from what uh, Mr. Uh, from what uh, Vijay Ma'am said. Uh, however, our customers like uh, JSW and Tata Steel, they have reported like 5-6% quarter-on-quarter uh, uh, production growth at their plants. So I'm not able to reconcile that. Uh, uh, why did we also not see such sort of a growth rate number, sir? Uh, one, one is, uh, you know, if you add these uh, credit blocks, then uh, we, we are at the same level or a little 1% more than that, about 4-5%. 
But if you take out only Jindal's and uh, Tata's, which is about 40 million tons of steel out of 130 million tons, so it is uh, 5% of their growth is actually 1.5% growth in the overall uh, scenario, right? So, so there, there, there are some striking decisions you need to take some time. You are looking at the pricing, you are looking at the credits and all those things. But I, I, I can reiterate that we will be growing at least with the market, if not more than. Internally, we believe we can grow better than market because all these new plants, as I said in my earlier comments, they will go with us for all critical items. Have we lost some share of business with Tata or uh, JSW? Have we lost, lost any share of business with Tata or JSW as well? Uh, no. No, we have not lost any business. Uh, we are their preferred partner. And uh, uh, could you repeat the calculation for sale? I mean, how much uh, how much of the quantum have we lost uh, because, of one, uh, because of the merger? You know, it is a very complex uh, calculation. I cannot explain to you in one or two minutes. What I am trying to say is, say if our market share overall, whatever is our revenue, if it is 30-40% in sale plants, so uh, out of that, some products which high-tech was also producing, Dalmia was also producing, we were also producing. Those products don't have... These are combined together, we will get only one, not three companies with border. But there are many products which uh, only high-tech was producing, not uh, Dalmi or uh, RHA Magnesita. I gave the example like uh, nozzle filling compound or tap or clay, etc. So there are many products which only single party was producing. Uh, that will not have any impact. So uh, and we are trying to uh, increase our market share. Uh, by bringing other products which we were not selling to sale. Yeah, but what is the net impact of this? Uh, 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 out of say 13 percent, uh, if I say is our total market share in a sale plant, then that will be about say 3 4 percent minimum. Okay, so our, so our share of business would go down from 13 percent to 10 percent. Is that understanding correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it will be temporary. It is temporary, and we are trying to mitigate these risks by introducing new products. And this happened recently, like in the last quarter, or uh, it has been the case in this. From the uh, acquisition, there was some order in place already. So when these orders were in place, we were enjoying all three companies' orders. And when new cycle comes in uh, June, July, uh, then the impact starts coming. Okay, and uh, we don't see this happening at other uh, steel plants because uh, why, sir? Why can't JSW and Tata Steel also have the same plants? What? Sorry, I can you come again? So, 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 sir, do you reckon that something similar will happen at our other customers as well, where JSW, Tata Steel, and the other ones will say that uh, since we are procuring from one entity, They'll uh, 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 reduce their purchases from RHI and maybe diversify their vendor ways. In, in one or two cases, yes. If there are only say, the product and uh, only two companies, for example, RHI Magnesita and the Dalmia were suppliers, so definitely now we they are left with one company. So they will try to develop some alternate source. So it is a natural phenomenon. So, according to you, how much do you reckon that uh, we will be impacted more by this? Uh, you can just give some numbers there. I, I, I don't have a number. It is um, very minimal, uh, you know, in percentage. Okay, got it. And, uh, so regarding this strike and the overall integration with Dalmia, could you throw some remarks where are we uh, in that phase? Where are we in that phase? Uh, is integration already happened? And why did we see a strike happening at uh, Rajinpur? You know, uh, integration is still ongoing, though it's almost a year. Uh, you know, it is a cultural thing, the management style. We are a thoroughly professional company, multinational company. Those who are, you know, family-driven company, whether it's a Dalmia or high-tech, 
So their way of working was different. Our way of working is different. So bringing the cultural change it takes time, you know. Secondly, uh, strike. You know, there, there is a union from last 30 years, a strong union. So they were handling it differently. If the union would come up with something, they stop the production, they will say, okay, come, let's discuss and uh, resolve. So we, we don't want to do that. We, so we said, you know, there, there is a uh, way to discuss without stopping production. And uh, we will not accept this. Mm, okay, but, uh, but we, going forward, uh, we have a good relation with them now. Hmm. Okay, and uh, have we seen any loss of share of business because of this strike? Uh, maybe the three customers that we uh, uh, missed out the supplies to, have they approached other suppliers? Like, so we need uh, uh, any thoughts there? Uh, as I said, if the plant is closed for 8, 10 days, yes, there will be your shipment impacted or revenue impacted temporarily. But the customer cannot reach out to any other uh, supplier. And the other suppliers cannot also supply the material. They need to make a mold, they need to produce, they need to ship. It is a cycle of maybe 45 days. Hmm. First they need to float an inquiry, then there's a, you know, offer, then there's negotiation, then order. Any big plant will take maybe a month time to even uh, placing the order on other suppliers. So this, this is, this is, that does have an impact. So, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, Sahil. Yes, yes. Sir, my first question is uh, regarding the Red Sea issue. Uh, since we are sourcing a lot of raw material from outside, is that a really concerning factor, the freight cost going up, the continued availability being affected? Uh, lease time increasing, and uh, can we really uh, would that really impact our uh, uh, you know RM cost and margins uh, going ahead? You are talking about this uh, Red Sea issue. Yeah, yes. 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 Uh, you know the freight is going up, and that timing because the rerouting, so it is an impact of almost two weeks, and. Um, Freight is almost um, sometimes double, uh, sometimes even triple. So that will have that impact. And uh, in coming days, we will also be reaching out to our customers to tell them the fact. And some of the customers are also worried about uh, how they will get that uh, inventory in time, material in time. So we are working on it. Uh, we, we are, you know, very committed uh, market leaders. So we will not uh, uh, allow any steel plant to stop because of this issue. We are taking uh, various steps at a global level also. Is that, sir, uh, I have heard that some of these uh, annual contracts get also revised in January. And uh, some of these steel plants have been asking for price cuts uh, up to the magnitude of 5 to 7%. Uh, are we seeing a similar uh, pressure on price cuts uh, and would that come in from uh, Q4? You know, there, there is a pressure on price cut, but now with this uh, Red Sea situation, even the container availability will be an issue in coming days because when you are rerouting two weeks, two and a half weeks, uh, you know, delay, the container availability will be an issue, whether it's uh, in Europe or in India or in China, and there will be congestion at ports and all. So I think now the first strategy of the steel plants, cement plants, will be to have refractory instead of uh, talking about pricing and reduction. So we are under pressure, but they will also be under pressure because the material will not be coming as smoothly as it was coming. I understand. Fine, sir. That, that's Our material suppliers are asking for even price increase because the freight has gone up. I understand, sir. I understand. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to request participants to please limit your questions to one or two questions per participant in the interest of time. The next question is from the line of Mayank Bhandari from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is uh, in the standalone, excluding high techs, what is your YOI growth? Uh, if you can tell for this quarter and for the nine month. Uh, see, in case of standalone, uh, we have integrated SAP system, so we do not have numbers for high tech separately. So the standalone numbers have to be with high tech only. So standalone, in, okay, okay. Uh, so, I mean, how much would be your export from standalone then? Any Export from standalone is 11%. And this has declined, why, why, how much? Yeah, uh, so uh, last year was around 16%. So it has come down, as Sir had mentioned, that uh, freight, Red Sea issues and uh, sluggishness in overseas market is the reason for a lower exports. Okay, and ma'am, uh, in terms of export capability, how much we have ramped up so now? I mean, are we doing export for flow control products also now? Uh, what is our status uh, uh, for its export? Normally, we are doing export of only uh, this uh, flow control products. Okay, so within flow control, uh, how many products? How many products means? Yeah, like uh, isostatic is what you had highlighted. Yeah, mainly it is isostatic and slide gates. Okay, okay, because I think you're in the process of uh, uh, improving the export for three or four more products in the near future is... Uh... No, no, mainly this is flow control and from Vizag plant, there's a high alumina uh, special refractories for export. Okay, okay. And lastly, uh, sir, uh, in, in terms of uh, high-tech capacity utilization, uh, this year it is, you said, 58%, right? This right. Is, uh, so, I mean, any expectation for this uh, year, uh, next year? You know, we, we are working uh, seriously on creating a Jamshedpur plant, a real uh, isostatic export hub. But, you know, in exports, it takes time, a lot of time. You know, doing trials and, uh, you know, becoming a approved vendor, it takes sometime one, one and a half year. So I, I believe in this year we will be doing better than the previous year. And uh, 25, 26 onwards, uh, we will have substantial uh, export business from the Shepo plant. So we are hearing that uh, in the export market, uh, uh, the situation has bottomed out now. So is it related to some demand slowdown in the export market or uh, how, how long can you expect that? Yeah, actually, in general, uh, there is a depressed market, uh, particularly talk about Europe or, uh, you know, because of this uh, Ukraine-Russia uh, war. And in general, Europe is uh, not performing well. They have their own issues. And I don't see in the next uh, three, four months anything is going to change. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, we'll have to take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking time out to join us today. We look forward to interacting with you again next quarter. And whatever suggestion you people have given, we will consider that to add to our PPT next time. Please get in touch with our investor relation team for any further queries. We will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of RHI Magna Sita India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You are now disconnect your line.